and welcome to TA Academy. In today's lecture, we'll be starting with the inductor design in a buck converter. So we have spent quite a few lectures discussing the basic waveforms in a buck converter. We had a detailed look at the turn on and turn off modes of operation. We also looked at the loss mechanism, conduction losses and switching losses, also worked out an efficiency problem. From today onward, we'll be focusing on the design considerations. And in today's lecture, we'll start off with the design of the inductor. So if you recall from my lecture on basic waveforms in a buck converter, the output current has a triangular pattern like this. So during the T on region, the inductor current rises with the slope equal to VDC minus V naught divided by L and during T off the inductor current decays with the slope equal to V naught plus 1 divided by L. And we also saw that the condition for continuous current conduction in a buck converter is that the minimum output current I naught minimum should be greater than the critical load current and the critical load current is the output current when the minimum of this current ripple let's call this point I1 and this point as I2 so when this minimum ripple I1 becomes equal to zero, then at that point, the output load current is called the critical load current. And if we want to ensure continuous current conduction, then the minimum output current should be greater than or equal to the critical load current. So we'll use this condition to work out a relation for the inductor output current. So we will force the minimum output current to be equal to 10% of the nominal output current. And then we can express the minimum current in terms of the current ripple. So if we are in this critical load condition, then we know that the output current I naught can be written as I2 minus I1 which is the ripple. So I naught is the midpoint of I1 and I2. So this is I naught minimum and if I replace it in this expression I get so I2 minus I1 I can write as delta I over 2 is equal to 0 0.1 times the nominal output current and from here we get the relation that the current ripple delta I should be equal to 0 0.2 times the nominal output current. So we have a condition for the current ripple in order to ensure continuous current conduction. So let me write this condition again. Delta I is equal to 0 0.2 times the nominal output current. Let's call this the first equation. And we already have the second equation for the slope of the current, we saw that during T on the output current rises with a slope equal to VDC minus V naught over L. So let's also write this condition here that delta I is equal to VDC minus V naught divided by L during the T on 
region. So we can equate equation 1 with 2. We get Vdc minus V0 over L times T on. And now I want to express T on in terms of the output voltage and the input voltage. So this comes from the basic relation of a buck converter that the output voltage V0 is equal to the duty cycle, which is T on over T times VDC. From here, I get T on as V0 times T divided by VDC. And this I can substitute in place of T on. So let me call this equation 4 and this one as equation 3. Putting 4 in 3, I get 0.2 times the nominal current I naught N is equal to VDC minus V naught divided by L times V naught times T divided by VDC. And I can express L as VDC minus V naught divided by I naught times N times VDC times V naught and this 1 over 0.2 becomes 5. So this is the expression for the inductor in order to guarantee continuous conduction given that the minimum output current I naught is equal to 10% of the nominal current. If that is the case, then this expression guarantees that the inductor will stay in continuous conduction. So that's it for today's lecture. In the next lecture, we'll work out an example and try to find the inductor value given VDC, V0 and the nominal output current. So see you in the next lecture.